when you're first starting out, you might be wondering, George, you, you know, I hear from you to write articles, make videos, create content, but why would anyone pay attention to me when there are much more experienced thought leaders in my industry, people who are more well-spoken than me or better writers than me, who have been in the field for 10, 20, 30 years and have so much experience to share. Why would anyone listen to me? And, and why should I be even out there saying anything when I could just point people to the thought leaders of, of my field? That's a real question. And maybe it's one that you has kept you stuck perhaps. Or maybe you, you know somebody who is stuck because of this question. Well, I hope that this video will help to re-inspire you uh, into creating content again, or to creating content for the first time. So let's talk about this. So I want to ask you first a question for you to, to reflect back to me. And the question is, what makes you view my videos and not the videos of all the other famous business experts in my field? Um, yeah, I don't have to name any one of them, but there are, there is more videos, there are more videos to watch online than any person can do in probably a hundred lifetimes, right? There's more than enough content online. Uh, lots of it is amazing. Um, even the most amazing content, we don't have time to watch for the rest of our lives. So what makes you spend the time watching my you know, not so entertaining videos compared to all the shows you could watch, all the, even the, the educational content that's more entertaining or more um, well-produced. My videos are certainly, they're not at all produced, they're just lives. So what makes you watch my videos and not spend time watching all the others? Um, before you go on, I, I uh, urge you to pause this video now and please comment below because um, your response is gonna help me tremendously and it's going to help others who are asking this kind of question as well and it might even help you so go ahead and pause now and comment below before you go on okay all right i'm assuming you've already commented because otherwise pause all right before you go on all right so i first answered this question uh, about a year and a half ago. Well, yeah, about November of 2017. And my answer then is slightly different than my answer now. Uh, so I could, you could say that I've gone through a, a different stage since I answered this question, but I'm gonna answer the question first from the level that probably most of you are at, which is you are still, you are either building an audience from the, from the start or you are building a small audience into a medium or larger audience, okay? So, um, you know what, actually, before I share my, my five points or whatever, I'm gonna actually read out a couple of comments from, from some of you the last time that I asked this question. Okay, um, so Sandy Freshy wrote, Okay, here's my response before I hear's your, hear yours, George. Even if the content is relatively the same, everyone brings their own frequency to how they express it. It comes through in the person's countenance, the tone of their voice, the ordering of the words, the environment, etc. I may hear a similar message from somebody else, but it might not inspire me in the same way. And there's also the relevance of relevance of rel there's also the issue of relevance and timeliness. Marie Forleo may have talked about the same exact thing six months ago, but if your video on this topic pops up, you know, in my feed at the time when I'm looking for the guidance, I'm going to watch your video and not necessarily think to go searching for the answer from other sources. I think Sandy has hit on a lot of the very good points here. Um, and when I share the blog post to this video, that you can read later if you want. There are other comments that I received last time that I thought were very wise about, about why we should, why we, little old us, right? Little old me, little old you could 
why should we make any content at all when there's already smart and brilliant and uh, entertaining people out there doing exactly what we want to do, okay? And creating exactly what we think we should be creating. So one, here, let me give you my, my answers. One is that you can be way more accessible than the gurus in your field. You can be way more accessible than the gurus in your field. So think of, I don't know, think of a, a, a thought leader in your field. Um, I don't know why. Tony Robbins always comes to mind. I'm not really in his field, but he's a well-known guru thought leader. You can't expect that you can comment on Tony Robbins' video and then get a reply from him, get a comment from him back, or even get a like from him. And it's probably, if you get a like or a love, it's somebody on his team, right? It's not him. You can't expect that you're going to privately message Tony Robbins or Marie Forleo or Brene Brown or Byron Katie or, you know, Eckhart Tolle or wh whoever, okay? You, you, you can't expect to message them and get a private message back, anything, and if they do, it's like two, two words or three words. I mean, not, nothing thoughtful. Well, I still, to this day, well, let me tell you this. So. When I made the original video in November 2017, I was still able to reply to every single person's, uh, you know, if a person commented multiple times, I might only reply once, but I, I would reply to every person who commented on all of my videos and all of my blog posts, all of my social media, I would reply at least something to say, thank you so much. I see, you know, some acknowledgement and, and some, maybe some additional insight if there's something that's relevant. So, uh, you could say that basically if you're in a in a stage of still building your audience where you're not yet overwhelmed with client requests okay i'll just say it that way if you don't yet have a waiting list okay if you still have space for clients then you are at the stage where i would recommend that you reply to every person who comments on all of your social media Every person who emails you should get a thoughtful response from you. Now, thoughtful doesn't have to be long and it doesn't have to take a long time. Okay, that's key. You could be thoughtful and friendly without taking an hour to write a response. You know, even my thoughtful responses take at most 10 minutes, right? And that's a very thoughtful response. That's a very long response. But you can be friendly, supportive, acknowledging without taking a long time. Okay, so you can be more accessible, way more accessible than the gurus of your field. And people find that to be so wonderful. Uh, they, 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 you, that is a huge advantage that you have. So when you start making your videos or writing your articles and then you use Facebook ads, for example, or Instagram ads or, or Google ads or YouTube ads or whatever to get, that, get it out there and you start getting you start getting a comment or two, by all means, as soon as you can. Now, not, not saying you should be online all the time, but at whatever rhythm is sustainable for you, go and reply publicly to those comments because not only is that person who commented going to be pleasantly surprised that they get a reply from the creator, the content creator, not only that, but other people who are watching your video, who are reading your article are going to say, wow, this person is actually there. This person is actually uh, engaged that I can actually reach them. Okay. And they actually say something back to me. That is not happening when you view Joe Rogan's videos or, you know, even Gary Vaynerchuk who prides himself on hustling and working 24 hours a day. And it's trying to, he says he not, not anymore, but he used to reply to everything, right? doesn't matter. Those gurus can no longer can do that. And by the way, I, since I, you know, since the time I, I made this video originally back in 2017, now in 2019, I'm, st I'm getting to that. I'm not a, not a guru by any means, but my, my, I have a, I have a very consistent waiting list. Uh, my, my group program is consistently full with the waiting list, my one-on-one -on -one, and my business is such that I am no longer able to reply, or you could say I'm no longer have the energy or willingness to reply to to all the comments. I, I almost never reply anymore to comments. So um, I have lost that advantage. You see what I mean? 
I have lost the advantage that you have when you have a smaller audience where you can actually build relationships with your audience. I've lost that advantage. I have to have a different advantage now. But let me, let me continue on with your advantages because that's what we're talking about here. Uh, secondly, uh, you are more relatable. You are more relatable than the gurus are to your audience. You are just one or two steps ahead of your audience. Now, you could say, well, maybe some of you have been studying your, your field or been helping people in your field for, for years. But still, being that you are not yet a guru and have thousands of clients or whatever, you are still more relatable than the gurus are. And people really like that. And you need to make that a strength of yours. You need to, you need to mention that and, and, you know, in, in your content to say, you know, yes, there are the celebrities or there are the gurus who have, are so enlightened. And there's, but, you know, I am not that different from you. I'm like you in that I also struggle with this. I also struggle with that. I also am working on this. But I have found a way to working on it that I wish I, I could tell I could help myself from a year ago or five years ago or whatever. So you are more relatable, and and when you tell your stories, tell the stories from that perspective that you're not trying to be perfect, because you aren't. Okay, you're not trying to be enlightened, because hopefully you know you can see that you have more work to do, but you could tell stories from a place of, I get you, I understand what you're going through. Because I'm going through that now, or not so long ago, I was there. Be relatable because you, you actually can be compared to. Because have you ever heard the term the curse of the expert? Well, it's going to happen to you too. And it's, it's happening to me more and more every year, which is I forget what it's like to be starting out. I mean, I've been, I've been in my business six, you know, full-time, full-time income for 10 years. 10 years I've had the full-time income working from home, doing what I, what I love. Of course, it's hard for me to relate to those of you who are just starting out. It's hard. I, I try, and you might be getting benefit from some of my guidance, but there's probably some other business coach who's a little bit farther ahead of you who's going to be able to relate to you better, right? Um, I've been creating content consistently now for five years, you know, since 2014. So it's harder for me now to relate to those of you who are just getting started. I have to try to remember, I have to try to imagine what it was like again. Do you see what I mean? So uh, whatever I'm helping people with, uh, whether it's Facebook ads or whether it's how to write a book or how to create an online course, it's like I'm, I'm so used to doing it now that I'm less relatable than I used to be. So use where you are now see it as a gift see it as like this is such a precious moment for me to document to me to journal for me to publicly share what i'm experiencing now because i'm just one or two steps ahead of the people i want to help and it's i'm not going to be this relatable ever again and and you could say that well every at every step along the way you're, you're just helping the people who are a step or two ahead of you like i I think my ideal clients are not just starting out anymore because, again, it's hard for me to relate. I think my ideal clients are people who have, who have some audience and they want to grow to the size that I have or, or even beyond, right? It's like, okay, it's more relatable because yeah, I was just there a couple of years ago, you know? So, um, so, uh, so I think that's, those, those are the two big strengths. You're more accessible you're more re you, because you, you reply to comments and you reply to emails and private messages at a more timely way than gurus can. And you reply personally, not, yes, I am, you know, Tony Robbins team member 842 replying to you now, you know, so uh, you're more relatable. And um, I think that's actually, those are the, those are the key things. And, and the, the key really is to be among the people, be willing to be among the people, you know, reach out to people and, and, you know, who are part of your audience. If you can reach out one-to-one -to, -one to the people who are commenting, that's, that's really, that's really uh, even better. So um, I think that's all I want to say for this video. I'm going to thank those of you who are uh, watching. Uh, you could say that my, my live videos are still a small audience, so I'm able to thank the, the Facebook Live uh, watchers. Uh, I still can still be accessible in that way. Uh, Alejandra, thank you. Gudrun, thank you. Lisa, thank you. Um, 
yeah, so that's I think it's the three of you, as far as I can tell. Anyway, Facebook doesn't always perfectly update all the uh, the watchers and comments. But uh, I want to thank you for all of your thoughtful comments here, Alejandra, um, especially, and Lisa and Gudrun. So uh, I'll be sure to read them later. And I I read I still read all of my comments, but I don't have the energy to reply. I just click on like or love whenever I can, though. So um, oh, I was gonna say <laughs> I didn't complete my thought here. It's like most of you are where I've just been talking about in this video, but uh, once you get to my uh, sort of where I'm at now, which is I would, I would consider myself having, well, it's always relative. I mean, some people would consider me having a very tiny audience, only 5,000 people, but on Facebook, that's it, right? Only 3,000 people on YouTube. You, you have a tiny audience, George, but I think to most of you, I would, I, you might consider me having a medium-sized audience. I don't have a big audience yet, but I would say I have a medium-sized audience, not a, not as maybe not as uh, where you maybe beyond where you are. So at my level, how do I stand out from the bigger and more experienced players in my field? Well, I have found my voice, and that's what you need to do too. You need to create enough. You need to experiment enough. You need to try enough, publish enough, post enough. And the more you do it, the more you find your voice, your authentic voice and your authentic message. And the biggest, not the biggest mistake, but a big mistake people make is they think they need to find their voice and their authentic message first before they make videos, before they write articles, before they publish books, before they create courses, before they fill in the blank. No, you find your calling. You find, you discover your voice. You discover your gifts by trying, by tr not just by trying, by trying publicly. By trying publicly. Because only by trying publicly can you see what the world wants from you. How else will you know what the world wants from you? If you only try it with your, th with your three best friends or with your three favorite supporters, of course they're gonna give you all the wonderful, you know, oh, you're so wonderful, oh, you're so great. No, you need to get out there to the bigger world and try with a general, with a bigger audience, uh, which can be done through Facebook ads or Instagram ads or YouTube ads or whatever it is and through partnerships and collaborations with other people's audiences. But you've got to find your, 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 your most authentic voice which of course I'm I'm still even though I I'm, I'm much more myself much more my authentic higher self now than I was three five years ago even a year ago I'm still it's a it's a lifelong eternal journey of continuing to deepen continuing to expand our understanding and our power authentic power is really what we're talking about here you have an authentic power that will keep on growing as you are. Are, are willing to take that next step of clicking publish, clicking post to say, I'm gonna test publicly. I'm going to express myself publicly. And knowing that I never have to be afraid of first uh, making a bad first impression or a bad second impression or a bad third impression because you have unlimited opportunities. You have unlimited impressions that you can make. Truly, I think I've said this in other videos, but the people who are meant for you is way more people than you realize, first of all. And second of all, they will sense your energy. There's an energy signature. There's some kind of like a soul group thing. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter if you, not, if you offend them or you're not going to offend them, okay? But at the most, you're, you're not going to impress them. And you're probably not going to impress them the first or second or third time they see your thing. Because you're still trying to find your footing. You're still trying to figure out what you're trying to say. You're still trying to figure out your voice. Okay, you're still trying to figure out your style. What is my authentic style? I don't want to copy George. I don't want to copy Marie Forleo. I, want to co I don't want to copy Brene Brown. I don't want to copy. The I want to find who I am. And you might take elements of what I do, elements of what Brene does. But, but it, it's really about you. It's about your authentic power. So don't be afraid to not impress people. Because people are not going to be impressed by the first, second, hundredth video you make. But they will keep coming back. I promise you, your 
right people will keep coming back. Now, they might not come back right away. They might come back three years later, or they, may, they might come back three weeks later, but they'll keep coming back to you until they see, they recognize that energy signature. Like, ah, yes, this is my, one of my soulmates. This is one of my, this is, they're not going to say that, but they're, 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 I really like this person. I, 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 I never knew why I like this person. Now I know why I like this person. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Put, put everything out there. Put everything out there. Okay, test and experiment with what, what your authentic power is because um, when you get to my stage, you'll realize, okay, this is how I'm setting myself apart now. I can't be accessible as you are. I can't be relatable as you are, but I have found my authentic power more than I did before. And so that's what you're attracted to now. You're attracted to my authentic power and, you know, now I'm kind of getting into that guru, guru-ness. I hope I, I, one of the things I was, I hope I don't grow too fast because I can barely handle what I've got now. <laughs> so I, I want to grow gradually. Uh, but, but that means, uh, but that's realistic because we always find our authentic power gradually. That thing that's, that's true as well. So I hope this is helpful. And uh, thanks to also Stacy uh, Miller has joined us as well. So thank you, Stacy, for hanging out here. And with that, and Paulo, uh, good to see you here as well. Um, I think that's all I can see here on the screen. Thank you. I see you. I will see you in the next video. Until then, create, experiment publicly, knowing that you have unlimited opportunity. You don't have to be afraid of displeasing anybody because they will always come back, always will come back to you. All right. Blessings. Be well.